Hello, hello. Today I will be featuring the La Galissonier. I have no idea if I pronounced that terribly. Most likely I did. Who cares? Anyway, moving on. This is the tier 6 uh, French cruiser. And so far it seems like, well sadly, the only actually good French cruiser I have played. Now, the lower tier ones have almost no armor. When I mean almost no armor, I mean they are literally as squishy as DDs. They have like 13 mm of armor on the Citadel, so they are complete paper. And the ones after this one seem to have some uh, rather questionable gun characteristics. But this one, the La Galissonier, I'm just call it, uh, I'm just, what should I call it, Galisson? The Galisson, whatever. At least this one has, uh, has very good guns. It has a nice shell velocity, I think it was somewhere around 875 meters per second, and it doesn't seem to have the insane air drag issue that higher tier French cruisers do have. So you can consistently land shells at even the max distance, and at short ranges even the AP becomes quite effective. In fact, I've been able to citadel cruisers like the Mayoko at 10km with this ship. Now, the HE and AP damage isn't that impressive, but considering the reload is only 7.5 seconds, the turret uh, angles are okay, and the turret positioning is excellent, of course. You have two turrets in the front, which is always pretty much the best way to go, since you can angle against shells while being able to shoot at them. But overall, the guns are... the shells are fast, the guns are pretty accurate, and the fire chance is 12% base. So when you add in uh, Demolition Expert, you can easily bump it to 14. If you add flags, you can get 15% fire chance, which means, of course, that this ship will also be quite a decent fire starter. Now, the HP pool is, of course, a bit of a question. 27.3k HP. Uh, that's even less than the Molotov has, significantly less than both the Bunioni and, well, what, 8k less than what the Cleveland has. So, uh, it is lacking a bit on the HP pool. But, ultimately, it is actually tanky enough because of the spaced armor it has. At least, I haven't really eaten any real surprise citadels that I didn't expect. I mean, if you go full broadside, yes, you will eat shit. But uh, broadside-wise, it is quite tanky. I mean, the tankiest cruiser at tier 6 is the Bunioni, and it has 115mm broadside armor. Uh, the Galissonier has 105mm uh, broadside armor, and then an additional 20mm on the Citadel. This is, of course, the spaced armor that, that these French cruisers use. And it has seemed to be doing a very good job of deflecting shells. It, it, it feels quite tanky, surprisingly tanky, in fact, I'll show you towards the end when I kind of YOLO into them. The anterior, as you can see, is pretty good. It's not Cleveland melt every single plane in the area good, but it's also not Molotov, uh, you don't kill any planes at all type of bullshit. Um, you do have pretty good anterior, and if you pop defensive AA, yes, you will be shredding planes. You will struggle against higher tier planes, but it's, once again, not Budionis' terrible situation. The speed is a big weakness though. Speed needs to be pointed out. This thing only does 31 knots. Uh, that is very, very slow. Uh, pretty much all the other cruisers are faster. Uh, I think even, was it the Molotov? That's 32.5, I can't remember, but it is, it is the slowest of them all. Now, uh, that's not necessarily that much of an issue, but it needs to be pointed out. I mean, it does have the speed boost to compensate, but still it feels like they made it very, very slow, then they added like speed boost as a bonus. Uh, it's a bit questionable, but it's definitely the slowest cruiser of them all. Worth, worth keeping that in mind. So pos positioning will, of course, be more important, as you won't be able to relocate as quickly in the ship. Budioni, of course. Unlikely to get any citadels, just raining some AP on him. You saw me launch the Torps. These are in fact the same launch you have on the tier 10. Uh, you only have two of them here though. Uh, but they are 9k in range and they deal about 15k each. So the Torps are okay, but you, do, you can't really YOLO in like you can for example. Uh, but only you can YOLO in the battleships pretty easily because you have five Torps per side. And that's plenty enough to kill uh, battleships of your same tier or even higher. Uh, this one though, with two torps, combined 30k damage, if you hit both, then you of course reduce torpedo belts from them, 
if you hit if you hit something very tanky then it's gonna be quite greatly reduced and well it's simply not gonna be enough to really kill anything it, it will be okay to finish stuff off but don't expect to be getting any alpha kills with these torps so that's of course the the torps are questionable the angles are great but um, the value they have is not going to be that high now someone popping a plane popping defensive AA instantly to shoot it down since there's no carriers in this game overall though this ship has been uh, a pleasant surprise because well at the higher tiers you suffer with the really weird air drag on the shells which slows the shells down more than you would want and makes it quite hard to land uh, consistent volleys and on the low tiers you have no armor and this is, seems like a good balance between the two the, or well and this is honestly neither of the two it's not a good balance it's neither of the two it's tanky for its tier and it has good guns for its tier as well uh, the matchmaking here is tier 5 to tier 7 perhaps not the most indicative of what you will be facing i mean tier 6 is of course plagued by constantly facing against tier 8s but i don't think that this ship will suffer too heavily against tier 8s because once again 15.9 km range means and uh, the capacity to get 15% fire chance means that you should be able to burn down battleships quite easily especially of course since the agility on the ship is pretty good it has quite a fast rudder shift and most importantly the turning circle is only 640 meters now that is much better than, for example, the Bunyoni, that has an 840 meter turning circle. In fact, it's even better than the Cleveland, that has a 650 meter turning circle. So, this ship is even slightly more agile or better at maneuvering uh, than the Cleveland is. So, that's obviously a big bonus, and uh, it's going to be especially useful, of course, when you fight higher tiers when you have to dodge shells and such being able to quickly avoid them and not get caught broadside uh, is probably going to be a lifesaver so stats wise this ship was one of the few that actually looked looked solid and playing it it does in fact also feel solid uh, the citadel is quite low so you can do a bit of potatoing and give a bit too much broadside and not necessarily get punished i mean it's not waterline citadel like one would hope but it's not as ridiculously raised either but if you do get broadside like i did there you will eat some damage but it doesn't have to be a citadel thanks to that um pushing in of course here i get to show some of the tankiness angling against them as i push in and this is of course the value of the turret positioning the fact that you can push in and nuke them at the same time not having too much issues as you can see i got an emerald shooting me on the left i got a mayoko and uh, Graf Spey on the right, Mayoko gives broadside, means guaranteed citadels, I managed to kill him off as well. Turning my guns for the Emerald, because, well, I'm hoping my torch will land on the Koenig, but it seems unlikely. They might catch the Emerald instead, and of course instant citadels since he gives broadside. And as, of course, I'm running Adrenaline Rush as well on this ship, so you can see my reload is actually 6 seconds when I'm this slow, and that of course means a lot of damage. Trying to get my torps on the right side off on the Koenig, well, wouldn't have gotten them off. Regardless, it's unlikely I would have even killed him once again, because you only have two torps and they don't do that much damage. However, uh, this ship, uh, the game does end with our victory, and I mean, the score is nice. Uh, I of course got no such things as high caliber confederate croc and things like uh, that I should have gotten uh, because this is a test account so we don't get any achievements on this but it does give an indication of course of how what kind of rewards you will get and looking at the base xp I'm pretty satisfied six kills once again um, not the most indicative of matchmaking but then again not the perfect matchmaking either since it was tier 7 so maybe a pretty good um, idea of what you will face. I will have to test it a bit against tier 8s though, but I don't really see it struggling so much in the future. Um, ultimately, looking at, of course, the score, we can see, or, or damage done, mostly AP, because, well, I found it fairly consistent in damage dealing. I should probably use more HE though, because the fire chance is pretty good, but I wasn't really shooting too many battleships this game. If I were focusing more battleships, I would be using more HE to show off the fire chance. But this is of course more of a first impressions vid and my first impression of this ship is that it looks like well wargaming at least managed to get one of the 10 french ships right this one seems 
pretty comfortable to play. It does have its weaknesses, lack of speed and such things, but it's pretty comfortable to play. It's pretty fun to play. It's not made of paper. Uh, it's able to tank fairly consistently. It's able to deal damage. The gunnery feels nice. It doesn't have any real obvious weaknesses or like massive downsides. It's just a solid cruiser. And uh, well, I'm happy that there's at least one of those in the line. Um, I will of course be returning to some of the other cruisers. I'll probably be checking out the higher tier ones. I've been testing them out and they seem decent, but none of them have been really earth shattering or even able to challenge for the title of best cruiser at any tier. But uh, this one I feel comes pretty close to giving the Budioni a run for its money. And uh, hopefully I'll find more, like, more, more gems like this one in the French line. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.